Hello, my name's Paul and I write HackingWithSwift.com. Recently I published an article, What's New in Swift 3.0? And it's been really popular online. Got lots of before and after examples from Swift 2.2 to Swift 3. And there are some really major changes. Things like uh, function parameters and have labels now across the board, including the first one. It has changes like omitting needless words, which really brings method names down. Things like blue color becomes blue, min element becomes min, append attributed string becomes append, and so forth. Really, really shrinks methods. Has uh, changes for enums to go from upper camel case to lower camel case. So they start with lowercase letters now. Things like CG color with lower CG. And it's got better importing of C functions, as you'll see in a moment. Plus, changes around verbs and nouns, which can get a bit fussy. Uh, do read the article, hackingofswift.com slash swift3 for more information. In this video, I want to talk you through how to install Swift 3 yourself today so you can try it. And trust me, it's completely safe. You can install it alongside Swift 2.2 and Xcode 7.3. Have them both side by side and test that out now to be sure your code works in the future. Uh, but first, a small advert. I write HackingWithSwift.com. It's a great site with some really awesome free tutorials. Plus, I make books of my stuff. So you can buy the official Hacking with Swift book. It has 1,200 pages of tutorials. It's really good. Only 30 bucks. I make Pro Swift full of videos. I make Objective-C for Swift developers. Awesome book. And a new one's coming out soon called Beyond Code. Uh, in fact, if you want to get a discount on this book, you can subscribe to my newsletter at gumroad.com slash two straws slash follow. Uh, and you get an immediate instant discount and mail to your inbox. Plus, of course, you can follow me on Twitter. I am at two straws and I tweet lots of Swifty things. Right, enough adverts. Let's get rid of all these things and focus on Swift 3. So, to get Swift 3 going, go to swift.org, the official Swift open source site. Then choose download from the left hand menu and you'll see some options. Now ignore the Swift 221 release and scroll down to snapshots. This is trunk development, the latest things the developers are working on right now. And you can see here this data come from uh, May the 9th, which is about two weeks ago now as I record this. Uh, that's the last release they've built. There may be another one soon. Uh, certainly will be one soon at WWDC. Uh, and we want the Xcode package for this. Not debugging symbols, not the Linux ones, of course, unless you are running Linux. If you're on an OS X like me, click Xcode. This will download a file that's around 220-ish megabytes, 229 it looks like megabytes. Take a little while to download. So I'm going to pause the video here and fast forward so you don't have to watch me download a very long, boring file. Okay, the download's now finished, and I have the package here on my desktop. So just go ahead and double click, and it will launch the installer. Press continue, choose install for all users, and press continue again, then press install. It will ask for your password. I'll enter my totally secret, top secret, never know this password, and it'll go ahead and install. Now the actual amount of data it installs is much closer to 900 megabytes, even though the package itself is only 230. This is because it installs the entire Swift toolchain. Things like the compiler, a debugger, and all the headers and so forth are all in there now. Anyway, it's finished. So I can go ahead and uh, firstly zap the Swift org window. is isn't needed anymore. Go ahead and launch Xcode. Now, right now, it's configured for Swift 2.2, which is fine. I can go ahead and open a Hacking with Swift project, uh, 2027. This is a project that relies very heavily on core graphics for doing drawing of stuff. And it has lots and lots of errors in Swift 3. Yay. Uh, to show Swift 3 in action, to get it moving, because right now it's all Swift 2.2. To get Swift 3 going, you choose Xcode, Tool Change, Swift Development Snapshot, followed by your date here, the one you downloaded. So I'll choose that now, and Xcode will prompt me to restart itself to go ahead and initialize the new tool chains. So it's restarting now, and all being well. There we go, and you'll see in Xcode, in very small text down here, Swift Development Snapshot with a date next to it. It's now activated Swift 3. So I'll reopen that project. And it looks fine, right? Yeah, not quite. Go to Product, Build, or any of those, in fact, just Build here. 
And now it's a Swift 3 mode. I have got 51 issues in about 200 lines of code. Now, fortunately, most of these are trivial to fix. In fact, Xcode can fix them all for you. If you go to help and in fact, just type in fix, you'll see fix next issue, fix previous issue, or fix all in scope are all available to you. And that'll do fix it because they're all here, fix it. But let's walk through them by hand to begin with. So you can get a feel for what's changed here. So uh, it's things here, it's telling us Phil Stroke has renamed to Phil Stroke with a lowercase f. That is the uh, lower camel case enum change you saw in the document I showed you previously. Uh, CG color is now CG color with lowercase CG. Great. CG, and of course, black color is now just black. Red color is just red, and that's CG color. These are really, really minor changes. The slightly bigger one here, the new way it imports C functions is much, much cooler. CG context, set fill color with color, an abomination, a real wart, quite frankly, of core graphics, has been replaced with a lovely method-like call on this CG context we, we create up here. So if I go ahead and fix that, using a fix it, you'll see it translates into context.set fill color. It's not really a true method call, but it basically is for us as far as we're concerned. And that's it. That's a new way it looks. Much, much shorter code. Same for here, you know, uh, we can say context.set stroke color. There we go. And pass in a, a CG color. So it's much, much shorter code here. We've got set line width. Great. Let's do context dot set line width. And it's just 10. Like that. Now it's whinging here because that is in fact optional. Uh, that wasn't an error before because all those CG context functions accept an optional uh, implicitly unwrapped optional context. There's more here. So you can see uh, uh, add recs now method as well. And draw paths now method as well. These, these are fixed elsewhere. These are the same thing again, repeated. That's same again, that's same again. More method calls. Again, that's a method call now. More CG color, lowercase stuff. Um, so it's, 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 it's a bit of a hassle really, but you get through it. So you can see here, uh, center, go from capital C to lowercase c. Dramatic. Uh, here's one of those needless words changes. Uh, uh, draw with rect is now in fact just raw. Uh, and then actually uh, that should be uses a lowercase u. I think the new parameter is with like that. So you have to label the first one. And again, it's saying here draw points now draw at. So we take out draw and use at CG point. There we go. And already we're down to 33 issues. So you can see you can really fly through this uh, to try and fix things uh, pretty quickly, actually. So context.strokepath. Do it. Being well. Uh, and it's indeed optional. There we go. Run it carefully. That's renamed to black. Awesome. And then CG color, lowercase CG. So you can, of course, use this fix all in scope or fix previous or fix next to fix them and have the fixes do the work for you if you want to. I would suggest that you at least try a few by hand to get a feel for what's changed and why. So if Xcode doesn't do a perfect job, or if you've got a lot of code and it's really important, it's absolutely correct, you know what's changing and why. And of course, do read the article. The article explains so many of these changes with before and after examples. You can sort of see where it's gone from this down to this. It's much, much clearer now, much shorter. But do read the article in full to see the full list of changes so far. Now. Uh, of course, Swift 3 is not out yet, coming out in two or three weeks uh, from now, the preview release with the final GM due in September sometime. So it could change even more over the next three to four months. So do come back to this page, hackingswift.com slash Swift 3. I will be updating that as changes happen. So do come back regularly, have a look, and you'll see new features there as they're announced. And of course, again, follow me on Twitter. I am at two straws. I'd love to hear from you. Do you like Swift 3? Are you excited by it? Are you scared by the amount of work to do? And of course, iOS 10. What do you want to see in that release? Let me know. I'm on Twitter, at Two Straws. See you there.